Hey folks, welcome to Airtime Paintball, where people come to find all the information they need to find good deals on paintball stuff. Today, the Field One Force. So, the Field One Force. Uh, this is a high-end gun that was released by Field One. It's their first original gun release. Um, Field One is a company that was founded by members of Dynasty, the pro paintball team. And um, they acquired, and I, I don't know the exact detail. I don't want to talk out of school here. But uh, they bought um, Bob Long guns, essentially, uh, like the design and such. Um, and they went on to... Uh, update, re-engineer, reimagine, and uh, create their own new high-end gun that came out last year. And this is it, the Force. Very cool. Um, before I continue, I want to point something out. Um, my good buddy, Anthony Leodoro of Ugly Paintball, uh, he is the one responsible for that. I'm not wearing one today because they're all in the laundry. But my last few videos, I've been wearing those ultra cool knuckleheads jerseys with the chimpo guy on them and like the 100 colors. And they, I mean, people message me. I, I bet I have literally 50 messages off my videos like, where do I get that jersey? Because that's how cool they are. Well, Anthony Leodoro is behind that. You want jerseys, custom stuff, headbands, uh, joggers, all kinds of stuff. Go to uglypaintball.com. And uh, Anthony is the man. Well, how how much so is he the man? I was chatting with him online, and I would mind you, we've never even met in person. And he was telling me how he wanted to buy a force. And then it occurred to him. He said, "Hey, have you done a video on a force yet? Have you had one?" I said, "No, I haven't had one." And he's like, "Okay, well, I'm going to order one right now, and I'll have them ship it to you, and you can do a video." And here it is. That's exactly what he did. Uh, he called there, talked to Yosh Rao at Field One. Um, and they were super cool. Yosh was super cool. They arranged the whole thing. He bought the thing and they shipped it right away directly to me. So I have shot this gun, messed with it, taken it apart. And Anthony's still never even seen it. And uh, he paid for it. So thank you very much to Anthony at Ugly Paintball for doing that so that we can all have a look at this. And uh, like I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not just plugging Ugly Paintball. You've seen me wearing the stuff. I've sent my own money on... Um, ugly paintball gear for my team everybody loves it everywhere we go people are like those are awesome jerseys and they are and you've seen them on the video so you know I'm not kidding so if you need that stuff look up Anthony okay field one force we're gonna start with the case because it's still in there my last video was the uh, Mac dev prime XTS video and I mentioned how that's an awesome case but it had one uh, kind of glaring issue to me which was no you know those guns you can put together a great barrel kit with the OEM barrels that come with those but they don't give you any place to put it in the case which I think is kind of ridiculous uh, well this case is even better than the Mac dev case this I'm gonna tell you is how a paintball gun case should be done uh, I take it all back about saying that that one's the best one. This is the best case. It's soft so that it's easy to have in your bag, um, it, but it has rigidity to the cover. Like you're very protective. I would gladly just toss this into another, into a gear bag and throw it on a plane and not worry about it being hurt. So uh, let's, we got a nice handle on top. You got the field one on the sides. Uh, there's like a thick sort of canvasy nylon, not canvas, but uh, nylon on the sides. And, um, yeah, just super cool molded foam covered with fabric on the front. Let's open it up and see what's going on in here. All right, let me do it this way so it's facing you guys. Barrel cover, cool. Um, instead of a manual in here, there is a series of cards. I don't think they're not all called Quick Start. Uh, a couple of them are Quick Start, Quick Start. Oh, I guess they're referring to all of these as the Quick. Yeah, I lied. This is the quick start guide, and it's a stack of cards. Now, the positive, um, they're very, the, the description, I've read the whole thing, the very good descriptions, everything you need to know to operate and maintain the gun is on these cards. It's really, frankly, a little bit more than a quick start guide. And I love that they have detailed photographs on each of these cards. It's hard to see in the video, I know. Um, but there's a pictures of each process from the barrel to the bolt. The ASA, clamping feed neck, all different, all the information you need to operate and maintain, uh, clearly illustrated by photographs and great quality text. That's all good. Um, I, I kind of feel like the cards 
is not optimal. Like I'd really rather just have a nice quality binder of some kind, just because I feel like they're going to get lost. Like I, I'm going to lose track of one of those, drop it somewhere. I'd like to see it bound at least, even if they're going to leave it in exactly this format. But the material is great. Nothing wrong with any of that. There's everything here from how to adjust the trigger to velocity to maintaining the uh, HPR and the ASA, all, all that stuff. The barrel, great. Now we have over here your typical stuff, right? Lube. The toolkit with this is a really nice toolkit. Hard plastic, and this is this is a cool thing about it. I like. Now, first of all, the quality of the box itself. Oh, geez, I, that's my fault. I had this open a minute ago because I was going to try to take still pictures for the video, and I decided to do it later, and I didn't latch it. So, yet another professional video making moment from your friend. At, uh, Airtime paintball. Don't worry, this thing doesn't just fly open. I promise you, I did that. But let me try. I'm going to try to get it closed without pinching those O-rings because I wouldn't want to ruin Anthony's toolkit. Okay, I've got it closed now. This is the cool thing. You have these, all these, just one compartment here, and then all these discrete compartments here. And if you can see that, they have different size O-rings, and that's because it's not just sort of a collection of o-rings they've come with this little paper here and it describes each each thing is separated into a particular item of maintenance like for example there's one um this um am i holding it the right way uh yeah this one here is labeled as inside front of volume chamber so if that's where you have a leak coming from and it's time to do maintenance in there you can just look at this paper and it tells you this is the box that has those o-rings that you need and they're all separated like that all for all the different areas of the gun i don't remember any other gun coming with that and you know lots of people aren't super tech savvy they might need a little helping hand as far as okay i have this leak and it's over in this area but i'm not quite sure what to do about it this little guide here will tell you exactly which compartment has the o-rings you need for that particular area i think that's super cool i really like that a lot kind of like the quick start guide the little piece of like the photocopy in the in here may be less than optimal. I wouldn't mind seeing labels on these or if they go to a bound manual, include this page with a picture of the parts kit in that would be better. But just like the cards, the information is excellent, maybe better than any other gun does it. Very cool. I like that. And it latches shut. I'm going to put that back in here. Now, barrel. Another place where this gun shines. The uh, OEM barrel, like the uh, MacDev I, I was mentioning earlier, is um, among the very best OEM barrels you can get. Plenty of people buy these. This is an AccuLock Field One AccuLock barrel kit. And plenty of people buy these as an aftermarket barrel kit for whatever gun they shoot that isn't a, a force or, or isn't a Field One gun. Because the, very nice barrel kit. It's a three piece kit, front and back with inserts. And. Um, this is how they work. Comes with a 691 and a 683. And there's little, um, I don't know what you'd call it, tabs, I guess, on the insert. And the front is beveled. And how this works is we put it in like this. And then we line up this tab here. I'm going to try to hold it up so you can see there's a little tab. And then you can see the slot in that back. Like I'm turning it back and forth so you can see the slot. You line those up and push it in so the, so the tab goes up into there. And then turn it. And we pull, you know, actually, when you thread it, it'll push it down, but you can turn it and pull it back a little bit and it locks it in place. And the AccuLock part is when you put in the tip, this end, I should have showed you, this right here seats against that beveled portion of the insert that I showed you. And once you screw this in, this, you can see the whole insert, of course, is sticking out the back, but it, it's in there as if it's welded in there. It's going nowhere, it's held in tight, can't move. Um, really, really nice design. Um, I have nothing bad to say about these barrels. They're great. And you can buy a whole range of inserts for these. Very cool. One thing I want to show, well, I don't have to take it apart to show it. because I'm going to put it on the gun here in a second. Here's where this case is beating out the MacDev case. You can see we have room here for all different one, two, three, four, five inserts. And you could leave one in the back. So six inserts if you want to, right? All along here. And on top of that, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to take it apart, but here we have room for backs and fronts, and maybe you have multiple colors that you want, or a short and a longer one. I think they're only offering 14 right now, but uh, you know, if they were to come out with a 16 and you like that too, you have extra room here, or like I said, or colors, to put two fronts and two backs, or whatever combination you have, you need. Um, so what we have here is sort of 
the opposite of that Mac Dev case. Not only is there plenty of room for inserts, I mean, I, th I think there's more room than you need for the barrel kit in here. And I mean, who am I to argue about having more than you need? So that is awesome. This case, for that reason, it will truly store everything you need to play with your gun, and I love that. Not too many guns are that way, or cases are that way. Very cool. And here it is, the gun. Now, this is one thing I wouldn't mind seeing changed. I've never been a huge fan of the Velcro straps holding the gun down thing. I feel like every time I take them out, I never put them back in the same way, and I have to move the straps around more, which you know wears on the Velcro eventually. But that's minor. The straps do hold it in there very well. It's nicely padded. Uh, I do like that you can just pull all these out, right? They're entirely Velcro. So if you need to work on the gun, this is a nice area to work on it because you're not going to lose parts in there right it's got like kind of a tray sort of right you can for example if you need to service your ball you can take it out and disassemble it and you're not going to lose the parts you can put a rag in here if you want to keep it clean um, so all in all case very nice very effective very protective all that said who cares about a case right let's look at the gun oh almost forgot the barrel cover All right. The Field One Force. Very nice gun. I'm going to do the same thing I always do with these. We're going to take a look at sort of the, um, the good and maybe some things that might not be so good. And, um, and then maybe if you should buy one. Now, with this particular one, I want to talk about the things that are the things I like to see improved or maybe not so good first. And the reason for that is people have a tendency to remember what they hear last. And I'm going to tell you right now, overall, this is an excellent gun. Um, I really like a lot of things about it. And um, if you are looking for a high-end tournament marker, you can certainly do worse than one of these, um, for sure. But there are some things that I would like to see different. So, uh, But first, a little overview. And by the way, one of the things I'm going to mention about the finish is that I'm, you see me wiping it off right now. This, I don't know if all the dust finishes are like this. This is the only one I've got. It's dust black. And it just, if you care about the aesthetics of your gun, and I don't mean that you might not like black or whatever, or, I, or like or not like black. This particular finish, though, it shows everything. I just pulled that bolt out for like one second, put it back in, and apparently I must have got a little spot of grease on my hands because it was like immediately covered with spots that showed, that showed all over it. And... Um, my experience in using this is every, pretty much every time I touch it, it leaves some kind of mark. Or if I get the tiniest amount of grease on my hands from surfacing the gun, it just like gets over everything. The slightest little touch and you can see it right on there. Uh, and that, that's a little annoying to me. But it is a very nice satiny finish. It's a tough finish. I will tell you, and Anthony's like grimace when he hears this. I took it off. I'm going to show you. This is my wedding ring. And it's titanium, right? Which is a pretty hard metal. And I wear it all the time in videos. I never really remember to do anything. And I was handling this, and I, I admit it kind of slipped my mind that this is not my gun. And I kept whacking my ring against various spots. And it suddenly occurred to me, like, I, I didn't even look. I'm like, man, if all those clicks are marking up this thing, I may have just bought myself a gun. I'm going to buy him another one because I might have scratched it all up. But my ring, I'm going to take it off again because I'm paranoid. But it didn't scratch a thing. It's a very tough finish. There's not a single mark on it, luckily for me and uh anthony right uh it didn't scratch up so that the finish is great there but anyway so yeah the the, the good and the bad etc but let's have a quick overview uh this gun shares a lot with its bob long gun lineage the frame the grips the um the trigger the, the the sort of the ergos of the shape of the whole thing are very very similar and clearly directly descendant from previous bob long guns i've got i always do this that there. What am I doing with that hand? That is a Victus. That's a Bob Long uh, Insight that's made by GI. And when you hold the trigger frames up to each other, they're almost identical. Same trigger. The grips are, in fact, I think that one's got a, uh, that one has a Field One Force, or not Force, but a Field One grip on it. I think it's just exactly the same grip. Um, yeah, so if you like the feel of those older Bob Long guns, you're going to like the feel of this. And I do like the feel of it. Great ergos. Uh, I love the triggers on these. Uh, I showed you the bolt a minute ago. The look of the bolt, this is a nucleus bolt, they call it, nucleus engine. 
it's different from the reflex but it shares quite a bit they've got a much larger on off and they've slowed the bolt speed down of these and i got this information from tim schaefer he does videos as a qt paintball uh some of the best technical overviews of um of paintball equipment that you're ever going to find anywhere super knowledgeable guy um hugely smarter than i am so i just take his information and give him credit for it i'll put a link below to his videos he does a great explanation of how this engine is different from the reflex engine that is in the you can put in the insight or the uh uh, Victus and they've slowed the bolt speed down in an effort to make them very easy on paint by milling out the ram a little bit different design to the ram and putting an insert inside there that is like a re sort of a reduction insert that redu reduces the force that you get of pressure on the bolt slowing it down and the result is these are very very easy on paint another result of that is they aren't as efficient as the reflex engine for sure like I always mention I didn't do an efficiency test um i don't typically do that Ever, like this there's, there's a ton of efficiency tests all over i've i've watched at least two efficiency tests for this you can just search youtube and find efficiency tests um i did not because it's not mine i have to apologize this is my overall impressions of this gun aren't as complete as they always are because of the holiday timing and such i i'm not going to have a chance to, i didn't have a chance to play with this i just put a bu uh, several hoppers through it and of course being brand new and not mine i, I don't want to put two thousand rounds through it right i've shot i think four uh, four hoppers through it and but i did start i'll tell you i started with a full like a i mean it was really nearly completely full it was about 4400 in my son's 68 tank and I shot those that now you saw in, or you will see in the shooting video. Um, I'm using a Spire 260 hopper full. And so we're going to call it conservatively, um, what, 750 shots. So we're talking about, what, five tubes? Is that right? Five is 250. Yeah, about five tubes. And when I shot all those out, I had way well over 1,000 pounds. I'm sure I had at least two pods left of air. Uh, maybe a little bit more. So if you shoot like a 77 or an 80, you're gonna be, you're getting plenty of pods. Like I said, if you need this specific data, I'm not trying to be a substitute for the data. You can go find an efficiency video for sure. But I, I even though it was less efficient than the uh, Insight engine or the Reflex engine, uh, I wouldn't say that it's so inefficient that it's an issue. Um, and also, Tim has been doing some experimenting with O-rings around the on-off to do volume reduction in this chamber in an effort to increase uh, efficiency. So if that's of concern to you, again, look for the QT paintball link below and take a look at some of his stuff and uh, can learn more about that. But uh, yeah, so, so maintenance on these, not difficult. I'm not going to take it apart, um, but um, standard, is it your standard deal? The, the can, the front and back of the can separate from each other. You can pull the rammer out, a couple U-cups in there. Uh, in fact, there's, there's lots of U-cups on this thing. You just, uh, your typical grease the O-ring, grease the U-cup, put it back together and done. Um, nothing complicated, nothing super complex, and they are very reliable. I'm trying to do this without touching it too much now that I have grease on my hands. Do what my mom always taught me not to do and wipe it on my, on my pants before I pick it up again. I'm sure I'm going to fail anyway at the clean thing. So anyway, yeah, super soft on paint. And, I'm, and when we see the shooting video, which I'm going to cut to here in a minute before we get to the good and the bad and whatnot, um, the design of this gun, the intent of it was to design a high-level competition tournament gun. And my, my friend Connor and I were talking about this earlier. He's another guy who's super technically knowledgeable. And I was asking him about the shot and what their goal was because I didn't feel like it was that much different from the Victus there. And he pointed out, you know, that the, the idea here was to make a tournament, high-end tournament gun that was very reliable and very easy on paint. And that's, an, you know, that's an, a, a good goal, right? I mean, when you're in a tournament, those are the two most, all paintball guns are accurate. As long as you reasonably match the bore of your paint to the barrel, they're all gonna be accurate. The most important things in a tournament are that you can keep shooting and that, um, it doesn't break paint. So reliable, easy on paint. And they definitely succeeded with this. So uh, with that in mind, I'm actually going to break here. Let's take a look at the shooting video I'm going to talk about. I actually sort of devised a, 
I mean, a test is really a strong word, but I had some old crappy, really brittle paint and I left it outside for a while to make it cold and then just let's like rip through a bunch of hoppers in a row. Um, and I didn't break a single ball. So, but here, learn more about that. And we'll be back in a minute once we see uh, a little bit of shooting of this bad boy. Hey guys. So here we're going to shoot this really cool uh, Field One Force. So we're doing something a little bit different today. Uh, I'd heard uh, in different videos and from talking to folks who had them, etc., that one of the um, one of the big things you get with the Force compared to previous. Uh, I know the guys at Field One hate when everybody brings up Bob Long every time, but and you know until they've totally moved on from that, it's going to happen. Previous Bob Long guns, like say the Victus with a reflex, or or I say I always say Victus because I have one, but Insight with a reflex, or even the stock engine, you know those are very high bolt speed guns. And the bolt is a great design. It's not like a blender. They're not particularly hard on paint, but not the easiest on paint, right? You might not want to shoot a stock engine Insight at a tournament when it's you know, 40 degrees outside with super fragile paint. It's just a very high bolt speed. Uh, it allows for very high rates of fire, which is really cool. And what they did with this is work on slowing the bolt down and in conjunction with the already great bolt face design, making it very easy on paint. It was one of the big goals. And when I first shot this, I can say that, you know, the feel of it didn't really sort of translate for me like i didn't shoot it and go oh yeah i can really see why that would be so easy on paint like the it still feels real snappy and quick um you, there's not really any indication the feel of it that the bolt is slower uh, but shoots great um so yeah i was curious about that so what i've done is kind of make a uh, a bit of a torture test i have this old gi five star i don't even know how long i've had it it's been sitting around forever i mean it's it's been inside and whatnot but it's really brittle even more than when it's new right and um it's about 40 right now that's why i mentioned 40 40 degrees outside here i put this paint outside for about three hours or so to sort of simulate you're playing outdoors that's pretty cold right so i would say that this is probably like kind of harsher than average test why i'm calling it a torture test right like you don't want to leave your paint out when it's 40 and uh, and also have old extra brittle kind of crappy paint but i've done it anyway i've put two hoppers through it so far this is the last of the open case i had of that paint so in a full two so almost full 260 and um i haven't broken a ball yet and i'm gonna rip through this hopper we're gonna see if we can get through all three and judging from how this paint has performed when i shot it a couple weeks ago if it makes it through three hoppers this without breaking a ball we can be pretty confident it's easy on paint because this paint is bad and it's old and brittle and well, let's let's rip it and see what happens nothing broken yet No more left and no bricks. So I gotta tell you, let me turn some of this off. I'm impressed. I know you can't tell how fragile that paint was. Um, you know, I, I just shot the last ball of it I have open. I should have dropped one for you. It was breaking on my driveway right here from about, I don't know if you can see me, from like this high, it was breaking. It's very fragile. Three full hoppers, didn't break a ball. So that's pretty cool, that's pretty neat. So about the shot. Um, I mentioned that, uh, you know, I kind of compared it for a second, talking about how Insights have a higher bolt speed and whatnot. So when I shoot this compared to my Reflex Cord Victus, um, they're, they're very, very similar. Um, in fact, I would say that just, you know, this, again, I always say this, right? Nothing to do with performance. We're just talking about how it feels and what we what it feels like when you shoot it. The performance is beyond reproach. I might just rip through all that, like, I don't know, 750 balls at least of this crap, fragile, 40 degree paint. I didn't break one. Awesome performance. The feel, it feels a lot like a reflex engine to me, but with an added little bit of, um, like a bit of a mechanical feel to it. It's not quite as soft feeling as, as the reflex. Uh, that said, it's still not a bad feeling. It's not like clacky um, or harsh in any way. I'm, I'm just trying to describe what it's like. And maybe you could hear a little bit of that uh, when I was shooting it. But uh, I really like that sort of tight 
poppy shot. It doesn't have an airy, swooshy feel to it. And I've mentioned recently that while I love my soft shot spoolies, like the Vanquish, I always mentioned super soft, I'm kind of coming around to liking a little bit more pop and snap in my in my shot. And this thing has a really nice feel to it. I like it a lot. I will say that I do prefer the reflex because it's kind of the same, but without that little added mechanical feel. But again, this is just preference, this is not performance. The performance is beyond reproach. Um, you can see here in the, and I'll, when I'm on the inside video, you'll be able to see better detail, but we've got pretty much the same Bob Long sort of layout here at Ergo for this grip. And I've always loved these triggers. I like, I like this, um, I like the shape of the trigger. I love the feel of the trigger. Um, certainly nothing wrong there. The size of the grips is nice. They're, they're, it's pretty trim, so you get a nice good grip on it. I'm gonna talk about the foregrip inside, I'm sure. I'm not a big fan. I don't think anyone is really. But overall, performance-wise, I mean, awesome. The thing shoots great. So uh, we'll go talk about it. Thanks. Okay, so yeah. Uh, I know I talked about there. I'm looking, here's the spots I said I wasn't gonna leave on it. Um, we talked about the feel of it. I know in that, in that shooting video, uh, it does not have that pillowy soft, you know, cloud soft, um, puffy spool shot. It's very similar to previous Bob Long spool engines where it still has a, a nice firm pop to it, but, but not, not a lot of kick certainly. Um, but as you saw there, it is in fact very easy on paint. And, um, one of the biggest reasons for that, and this is again, something that, that Connor pointed out and I checked this and it's true is they really put effort. And this, this seems like a small detail, but it's very important. They put real effort into making sure that when the ball dropped into the breach, the, the dimensions of this, um, of the breach are really, really close um, to uh, how exact, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And what I mean by that is the location of the two detents poking into the breach and the back of the bolt are such that when the ball goes in, it has nowhere to go. It doesn't wobble at all. Um, and that's the point of having detents, right? To keep the ball in the breach. Uh, I've tried many other guns. In fact, you know, I had never done this for this reason, but when he told me that, I started taking a couple paintballs, and I, you can see I got several paintball guns up there. And I would drop a ball in and then kind of go like this and see how much it moved or feel it. Sure enough, he's 100% right. Out of every gun up there, and you can see I've got a Cocker 160R, the Victus I've been talking about, CS2. GTEC, there's a, a Vanquish up there, and what's my head in the way of? Oh, a six. Um, I checked all of those, and of all of those, they all allowed the ball at least a small amount of wiggling when it was in there. When I dropped the ball in this, there was essentially none. Like, so little that I couldn't tell when I moved it if it was because I was really pushing the detents out of the way or if it was just moving. And what that means is when the ball drops in the breach, the face of this bolt in the inside of it is rubber. And because the ball is located so well, uh, instead of the ball being hit by the bolt on the way out, it's already against that rubber bolt face so that when it moves, it just pushes it. And that's a big deal in paint handling. Um, and now I can't say that it's, this is definitely better in that regard than every other gun. All I can say is that it turned out in my little informal test of, oh, I think I'll drop a ball in and take a look at it. Of all these guns, it was the best of all of them. So I have to believe that... Um, that's a, uh, you know, a big reason why it handles paint so well. So, um, yeah, so let's go through uh, real quick. I already mentioned the grip frame uh, being very similar to the older Bob Long stuff. We have uh, eye, eye covers that require an Allen, so they're not toolless. Uh, of course, and you can see, obviously, grips are not toolless. Um, I've mentioned before, I'm not a huge toolless I mean, I don't care that much if things are toolless or not. I mean, if I need to clean my eyes out, the fact that I have to unscrew one Allen head here is really not an issue for me. I don't know. I'm not sure I even notice it, right? I mean, it's one Allen head. It takes two seconds to take it off. So not a big deal, but not toolless. Um, ASA is essentially the same cam drive ASA on uh, other previous Bob Long guns and the Force uh, has is also using it. Seems to work fine, no issues there. I've never had an issue with any of these that I've got on other guns. Uh, we already mentioned the barrel. Um, one upgrade for this gun compared to the older Bob Long stuff is that you can see we have the th knob for the breech like many other guns have. So it's much easier to fine tune, uh, for, not for the breech, for the, for the feed neck. Uh, much easier to fine tune the clamping force on that. Um, 
So that's a positive. And I started out saying I was going to go not so good and then good, but there's not very much that I don't like about this gun. So I guess I'm kind of abandoning that and just telling you about it all together. But I have come to something that I'm not a fan of on this gun at all. And I don't think I'm alone. And it is the foregrip. You can see, well, maybe you can't see it, but there's no rubber on here. It's just aluminum. And um, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I hate that thing. I think it looks awful. It feels awful. I mean, when I when I hold it to shoot, I, like I mentioned, I didn't get to play with this. So I can't tell you, oh, I never noticed that when I'm playing. I, I don't think I would notice it when I'm playing. But I mean, to look at it and to feel it, it, it seems to me like the thing that I'm holding because the thing I'm supposed to be holding on to has fallen off. And this is what's left. That, that's what it seems like to me. I don't think it looks good. Um, I don't think it feels good. I just don't get that at all in a high-end gun. I mean, I feel confident that when they're doing their first revision of this to come out with their next model, that that will be fixed. I certainly hope so, because it is by far sort of the worst thing about this gun. Um, but functional functionality-wise, um, the size of it's not too bad. I don't have a problem holding it. Uh, I think it would fit a wide range of people's hands, Um so that's good. It also allows for adjustment where you, you can you can take a screw out the bottom here and take it apart and then move the mounting portion around and relocate the grip. And I found that to be uncomfortable and not useful when I put it back to stock. It's to the point, and I, I guess I should have taken a picture for you guys of it in the other position. I bet you can Google one up. I, and you know what? I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I will Google one up and I'll put it in the video. Um, I didn't find the other position to be useful. So to me, even though it's theoretically adjustable, I'm not sure anybody would ever adjust it to that other position. And I'll, I'll cut in a picture like, uh, like right here. Whoops, it's behind the microphone. Right here. See if I can do some video magic. Um, so yeah, foregrip, not a fan. The actual grips I like okay. Uh, I, 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 I like them mostly. One thing is there's a little F1 graphic here, which is hard plastic. And... <clears throat> I'm just not a fan ever of any hard plastic that I'm actually feeling with my hand. Like some guns have little badges or whatever. I don't typically notice that. But I actually feel that when I hold this gun. Um, and I, I don't like the feel of it. I wish it was just all rubber. So that's a small, um, a small negative for me. But on the other hand, uh, a lot of people like these grips a lot. Enough so that it's a common upgrade on the older Bob Long guns, like the one on the wall there, where people remove the stock old Bob Long ones and put these new Field ones on Field One ones on that uh, come on this gun because people like them better. So I could be in the minority there. Another feature on this gun, of course, is the OLED display. And I'm going to turn it on here and see if we can see it in the uh, in the video. So I know you're not going to be able to read that. Let's see if it focuses there. I need to worry about my my camera is not the best at changing the focus but the the OLED it's bright um, I can mostly I can see it in daylight when I went outside now it's kind of overcast today but I can still see it um, they did update the format of the way the information is displayed compared to the older Bob Long guns but it's the same display it, it might be a little brighter I, I guess I don't know that it's the same display it looks very similar I think it might be a little bit brighter but it's like an incremental change if it's different. And I would like to see in their next generation of gun a more modern um, display. And, you know, I, I keep saying that on all the different guns. And if, you know, there's plenty of guns that don't have a great display on them. It's kind of the standard, really. It's, it's the, the rule rather than the exception. The MacDev has an excellent... Um, full color display that's easily legible and it's on the side of the grip here and then of course there's those die guns the the m series that have the really large i mean that's that's by far the gold standard in paintball guns a huge display on the side that's super easy to read you can see it in the light and it has all kinds of information so much information that there's a bit of a learning curve to understanding how to navigate all that stuff but that's the standard and it's not just in in uh, field one's case in general across the high-end guns i would really like to see everyone sort of step up their display game and try to compete with that amazing die screen and the quite good mac dev screen um but that said uh the way the information is presented is good um 
if I'm wearing my glasses, I can see, I can read it fine and not being able to see it without my glasses on. You know, I mentioned that in the Mac dev video. It's not really a fair comparison, right? Like it's not, it's not their fault that I need, <laughs> that I need glasses, but, uh, um, they do pack a lot of information on that small display. And, uh, if it were, uh, if there was less shown, but bigger text, I'd be able to read it without my glasses. And in this case, I can't. So, I mean, that kind of is what it is, but, um, and that sort of wraps this thing up. I will tell you in general, this is an excellent marker that fulfills its mission. If we're assuming that the mission is high-end tournament focused gun that is uh, very easy on paint so that it can shoot fragile tournament paint in extreme conditions, check, definitely does that. And it's reliable. And of course, I've only shot a few hoppers through it. But uh, by the way, you know, I mentioned before, I left my paint outside for, and it's about 40 degrees out uh, for a, a couple of hours. You know, I forget, I don't know what time it is right now, but yeah, at least two hours. I think it might've been almost three hours. I left the gun outside for about two hours. So the whole thing was cold. And when I gassed up and pulled the trigger, it shot right away. Um, I have no reason to believe that it's not reliable. I'm told by my smart technical friends that this it, this engine in this iteration is extremely reliable and I have no reason to disbelieve them. So if that's the mission, um, then mission accomplished. One thing, it's a little bit heavy. And I mean, more than a little bit, frankly. It's, it's two pounds, six ounces. And out of every gun I have up there, nothing is within five ounces of it. And I'm not really sure why that is. Um, it's not so, I mean, you know, I've got an autococker up there. I'm not counting that. An autococker weighs like a pound more than this. It's not, it's, it's not, um, you know, I mean, you can see me waving it around here. It's not like it weighs nine pounds, but six ounces is a noticeable amount. Um, so trimming it up a little bit might be nice. Um, however, that sort of, it's, remember I mentioned in the shooting video, it does have kind of a pop to it, but at the same time, it's smooth and doesn't kick much. And that extra mass will definitely counter kick. So the extra mass could be part of why it feels so nice to shoot it. Um, but yeah, if weight is important to you, if that's a big factor, then you're going to want to hold one of these before you buy it. Cause it's about, I'm going to, I'm going to be conservative and say at least four ounces heavier than your average gun. And like I said, nothing else I have up there is within five. I think the vanquish was the second heaviest one. And it was like two pounds, one ounce, I believe. Um, but overall, yeah, uh, shoots great, su super good on, uh, on fragile paint and uh great great barrel kit and the case is excellent uh, overall solid offering from field one uh, as i always mention if you like what you see with these videos or reviews if you would please like and subscribe that does a huge favor to me because people get to find my videos in search and um maybe find the information that they're looking for and, and that's always great um, i like to see your comments below what do you think about this thing i know the looks of these are a little bit polarizing. Not everybody likes them. I'm going to be honest, in pictures, I didn't like it either. And while the to me, the foregrips does does take away from the looks of it some, now that I see it in person, I, I actually kind of like the look of it, frankly. Um, it has a really neat sort of long teardrop uh, milling out on the top, which I think is a really nice look. The scales are, uh, are well done. Uh, in person, I definitely like it better than I did uh, in pictures. Um, so what do you think about it? Put some comments below and check out those links for Tim's uh, QT paintball channel. And I'll also put links down there for Anthony Leodoro's ugly paintball. Uh, thank you again, Anthony, for letting me shoot your great gun. I will not handle it with my titanium wedding ring on before I package it. I promise you it's still spotless. There's not a mark on it. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Have a great day.